Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well, staying safe, staying inside. My name is Yara and today I'm going to be tier ranking every book series that I've read. I've been seeing a lot of these tier ranking videos and I think they're a lot of fun to watch and I've been trying to find a way to incorporate talking about series that I've read in the past that but like not during my booktube years in a way that wasn't just me listing off every single series that I've read. And so I thought this was a really good way for me to incorporate that and maybe talk about series that I wouldn't necessarily talk about otherwise on my channel. So for this list, I've included all the series that I have read in full and most of the series on this list are ones that I have read every single book of, but I have included some where I've read not all but most of the books or at least enough for me to have like some sort of opinion about the series. And so without further ado, let's just get started. And so the tiers that I have are God tier, Demi God tier, Great tier, good tier, okay tier, bad tier, and trash tier. Um, the only reason I put demigod tier is because I know I'm going to be a little bit too nice and put too many things in god tier. And so demigod tier is kind of like things that have the potential to be god tier but maybe need like a bit, little bit more time, maybe a little bit more reflection for me to officially give it the title of god tier. Okay, so first up we have Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This is a duology. It's a contemporary duology. It deals with like a lot of heavy stuff like rape and homophobia. And I think it's brilliant. Frederick Bachman has such a way of creating such a vivid small town atmosphere and can convey so much about the way people think and like how we be a society function in times of stress. And so I'm putting this in god tier because I had, it's been a long time since I was that affected by a contemporary book. Next we have Beautiful Creatures. <laughs> and I remember everyone on booktube not really liking it, especially after the first book. But I continue to like it and Beautiful Chaos like it destroyed me. But I think if I were to read it now, I wouldn't have the most positive opinion about it. I think I would still like it. So I'm gonna put it in good tier, I think. <laughs> Oh, next is The Hunger Games. So yes, another automatic god tier. I actually can't speak to how much I enjoy the book's contents now because the last time I read this was about like six or seven years ago. <laughs> but I don't think I'll ever have quite the same experience that I've had with a book series that I had with Hunger Games. Because I read them at the time when the movie was announced. And so I was like following all the casting updates. I know exactly where I was, what I was eating. I was in a macaroni grill when Jennifer Lawrence was cast as Katniss. <laughs> I remember being so much fun being able to talk with my classmates in fifth grade about the cast and just all the news coming out and then the release. I couldn't go see the midnight premiere because my parents didn't let me because I was 12. Genuinely just such a fun time. And I also do think that the series explores a dystopian society and authoritarian state in a way that a lot of people don't give it credit for and probably the movies didn't reflect as much as they should have. But yeah, god tier. Bloodlines. I think like I should talk about Vampire Academy first so... I'm gonna do that. It's so hard not to like hunch over because I have a tendency to do that. I'm gonna try to, you know, have good posture. So I'm gonna look on Vampire Academy first. And I gotta admit, Vampire Academy was a fun time. I do remember not liking the first book. I thought it like annoyed me to no end. I was gonna put this in good or okay tier based on the enjoyment that I had when I read it. But now that I think about it, I remember that there is a relationship between a 24 year old and a 17 year old. And uh, that's not the best. <laughs> So what about this in bad tier? Not the healthiest thing to portray in a book targeted towards young adults? Bloodlines on the other hand. I think I enjoyed it the same amount as Vampire Academy. I thought it was cool because we got to explore a different part of the world that didn't have to just do with like the vampires and that whole lore. Like we got to explore something with like the alchemists. And I'll put that in good tier because I did like it. Ah, the lightning thief. <laughs> Percy Jackson and the Olympians, of course, god tier. I'm gonna put this in first of god tier. Can I? Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I have like tons of videos describing how much I love Percy Jackson, so I'm not gonna use your time right now talking about it, but yes. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm gonna put Bear Town in demi god tier because I didn't love the second book, Us, Us Against You, as much as the first book. And also, I feel like god tier, like the books that like I get like super excited about and also I'll probably have a lot of like nostalgia to it. So I think Bear Town is going to be god tier at one point, but I don't know for now, but I'm demi god tier. So Cinder, oh my god. I love Cinder, the Lunar Chronicles. It's such a fun time. And Kai and Cinder are generally one of my favorite fictional couples of all time. Like the angst that we had to go through to see them finally be together. I read this series a few times back in the day. And each time I just fly through it because they're so much fun and I love all the characters. 
City of Bones, <laughs> or the Mortal Instruments, I should say. At the time, I did really like these, but even then, I knew that the Infernal Devices was like far superior. And I think if you were just going by the first three books, I would give it good tier, but I don't remember anything nor really care about anything that happens after. But yeah, Cassandra Clare was definitely not her best writing standpoint during the Mortal Instruments. Infernal Devices though, that is god tier. Oops, nope, god tier. Like, I don't know what happened, but Cassandra Clare's writing like stepped up like a hundred times. And even though it's technically the same world, but just 200 years prior, I found the world to be so much more interesting and also the characters to be so much more interesting. Like Will, Tessa, and Jem, such a great trio. And while with like the Mortal Instruments, I don't see myself ever revisiting that again, unless it's for like some sort of experiment. I would definitely reread their Infernal Devices, and I have in the past. And not even because it's just a fun read, like it like destroys you emotionally. Like the emotional turmoil that this series makes you go through is like very, very unmatched. Maybe to only like a few other things. Daughter of Smoke and Bone. So I only read the first two books. I've read Daughter of Smoke and Bone and Days of Blood and Starlight. And I looked back on all my Goodreads. I gave the first one three stars and the second one four stars, but do not trust anything I said about the second one because I did not like it. I think I gave it a high rating because there were parts that like I did enjoy and also like everyone raved about the series. But believe me, I could not get through that book. It took me so long. It was so, I was so bored. But this is a series that I would consider revisiting because I do love Strange the Dreamer, which Lenny Taylor wrote. And so I think I'm, I might be more open to that kind of writing style. I don't know, but for now, I'm putting this in okay tier because I don't, I don't think it's bad. It just like was not really for me. <laughs> I put Diary of a Wimpy Kid on this list. I was debating it, but I thought, you know, why not? I read like nine books of that series. So I'm counting it as a series that I've read. You know what? I'm putting this in good. I don't even care what anyone says. Especially for the age that it's targeted to, they're so fun and also so funny. I think I reread the first five or six books like genuinely seven times and, and it's actually kind of like a weird reason. So essentially I read this scary ghost story when I was in fifth grade and I couldn't go to sleep so I needed something to like cleanse my palate so I would like calm down. So I would just read a few pages of Diary of a Kid and so I did that every night while I was reading this book and I just continued doing that. Like I would have my main book that I was reading then I would read a Diary of a Kid book to kind of just bring me back to reality. So yeah, I have, I have a fondness for this series and it's really well done for what it is. Divergent. Again, this is hard because I think the first one actually is pretty good. I definitely loved it at the time and I also didn't hate Insurgent. I did think it kind of slowed down but I did think that there were some interesting like political stuff that was introduced and like just world building stuff that was introduced but Allegiant. I did not like Allegiant. <laughs> not even the things that necessarily happened just the way that it was executed. I don't think that it was done in the way that it should have been if, if Veronica Roth was planning to go on that route. I also think that there should have been like a fourth book given how much new stuff Veronica Roth tried to incorporate into a legion and just did not successfully explore at all. So yeah, I'm gonna put this... Do I put it in bad tier? Oh, that kind of hurts me. I'm gonna put it in okay tier. Because at least from like an entertainment perspective, I didn't hate it. <gasps> Kingdom Keepers! Oh my god. Does anyone remember this series? I feel like no one read it, but I was obsessed. Again, this is not a series that I finished. I only read up to the fifth book, I think, and there are seven. This was actually a series I read before I discovered Percy Jackson or Hunger Games or Harry Potter, and I really, really loved it. I think I reread the first three books like three times in elementary and middle school. It's essentially about the Disney parks, like the characters coming to life at night and these like five teens get recruited to save Disney. And me being a Disney fanatic, I ate that up. Definitely if you asked me like a few years back, I might have put this in great tier, or at least good tier, but I tried continuing on with the series in like ninth grade or something and I could not. The writing style was really bad. <laughs> I even remember as a child, like in like fourth and fifth grade, reading this and finding typos and errors and just weirdly free sentences in the finished copy of the books, which is, I didn't think too much about it, but now I think that that's a really weird editing error. And also the author had this habit of just like changing things about characters and not like explaining them. like. It was just like a, either a passing line or you just like, you just found out as the characters just started using it. Like one character's entire name, like her name was Jez or Jezebel or something in the first two books and then suddenly 
he starts calling her Jess. And I'm like, when? When? When did we do this? Yeah, so this pains me, but I think I'm about to put it in bad tier. Uh, I, I, I might move it to okay tier. Ah, uh, no, I feel like it has too many errors for me to put it in okay tier. Legend! I really, really loved it at the time. You know, when dystopians were the big craze like in 2014. And the last book absolutely destroyed me. I don't think I've ever cried over a book as much as I cried in Champion, which is saying something, because I don't really cry that much in books. And Marie Lu did release like a sequel book to the series, which is like generally what I want. Like I would have killed to have that in 2014. Anyway, yeah, I think I'm putting it in great tier. That's a really, really good series. The Letter to the Lost duology. Okay, I didn't know whether to include this or not, because it's like, not like a series, but it is a duology. They are two related books and one occurs after the events of the other, just following different characters. I didn't get that. Could you try again? My, someone's the series just... <laughs> and again, this one is hard to put because the first one, I honestly would put it in at least great tier, probably demigod tier, because the first one, but it's still lost. So good. So good. It explores grief and guilt so exceptionally. And the relationship that is developed between the two main characters is so organically done. I love it. But the second book I thought was kind of weak. I liked one perspective a lot and I didn't like the other perspective and I gave it like three stars. I'm gonna put it in great tier just because of the things that the series explores. I think if anything, people can gain something from it even if I don't think it was perfectly executed in the sequel. I still think it's worth a read because it's genuinely like a new perspective I don't think a lot of books cover. Magnus Chase, okay. So I only read this series once, so I don't have as strong opinions about it. It's definitely at least good tier. Like I know that for certain. And it also has my girl Samira, who is the first Muslim I ever read in a mainstream book. I think I'm gonna put it in great tier because I definitely don't like it as much as say the Lightning Thief and the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. But I really like our main group of people. I love Magnus, I love Sam, I love Alex. I love Hearthstone and Blitzen, like the relationships that they form are so endearing. And also just like the representation in this series, like Rick Riordan only went off. So yeah, it's definitely a series that I need to reread and I might put higher, but I haven't read it since when it came out. So right now it's gonna be, it's, it's a really, it's a solid series. It's really great. Matched by Ali Conti. You know, even at the time when I read this, like in 2012, I knew it wasn't gonna be like a favorite, but I did enjoy it. I really think my standards were just really low back then, because I do remember saying that I liked the sequel Crossed, even though like I did not have the greatest experience reading it. I just didn't, if I didn't hate something, I was like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> but yeah, this is our first trash pick because truly like nothing happens in this series, especially in the second one. Like there's this whole like adventure sort of thing and they have to like cross the desert or something and like nothing happens. The series is super forgettable. I don't even remember what the dystopian world was about. Oh, I think it was like the whole, you get picked who you're gonna marry in life. And the main girl was like, no, but I'm torn between this guy and the one that was picked for me. Just, nah, nah. did not even read the last one. When I was making this list, I totally forgot about Maximum Ride because I never actually finished it. So I didn't, I, I have a list of all the series that I've read because I like keeping track of things like that. Or I have the series that I've completed and Maximum Ride wasn't on it because I never completed it because James Patterson kept adding books onto it. And again, if this was just the first three books, I honestly would put it in good. Like those were good. I had a good time with them. I liked the sibling dynamic between the main people, even though two of them do end up becoming romantically involved. Forget about that. <laughs> But after book three, the series goes crazy. <laughs> Literally insane. Nothing makes sense. I remember one was about global warming. It literally, like that series feels like a fever dream. Uh, I'm putting it in trash because it truly felt like James Patterson just like spit <laughs> ideas and was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. And also the series, like it had an ending and then he decided to add another book as an ending. I didn't read them, so I don't really know what was inside of them, but that's just weird. Okay, now Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I love this series. I think it's really one of the most thought out dystopian worlds that I've ever read. And you can tell that Neil Shusterman really put his focus on the world, perhaps to the detriment of the characters. I personally like the characters, but I know that is a common complaint that I see from people. And the Thunderhead is one of my favorite characters of all time now. I think the way Neil Shusterman developed this AI and its consciousness was so fascinating. So yeah, I think I put it in demigod tier. 
So, Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. You know what? I'm putting this in great. I know it gets a lot of hate on booktube, but one, I had a great time with it, and two, I also don't really agree with a lot of the complaints that I see on booktube. I was thinking about putting it in good tier, but I don't really think that it falls with these choices that I put. <laughs> Honestly, now I'm rethinking my whole tier scale, but whatever, we're already here. I think Shadow and Bone does a good job of setting up the world in a way that's definitely not overwhelming as a high fantasy world. Even though sometimes I think I would have wanted a bit more detail into what was happening, I think it was very accessible for someone who was new to fantasy. I like Mal and Alina, which is an unpopular opinion apparently. I think both of them can be very annoying, but I think, I think the series does a good job at kind of talking about why they're acting the way they are and also showing how they've developed from that. Like, I really think Rune and Rising showcases a lot of the growth that the characters go through in the first two books. I also like how Faith plays into the series. It's something that I really like to see in books, how they incorporate religion, because religion is such a very big part of history and just culture in general. So I like it when fictional worlds incorporate that and how that affects people's actions. But Six of Crows, on the other hand, <laughs> god tier, put that above Cinder. For most of these, the order doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna just, just to make note. Actually, above Hunger Games too, like, it's really hard to beat nostalgia when it comes to your favorite series, but Six of Crows has done it. Those two books are expertly written. I love the way that Lee Bardugo develops Ketterday and how it's like this very merchant capital where like a lot of different people of different backgrounds are going to intersect and interact. In just these two books, she's expanded the world all the political struggles, as well as all the very personal issues that people may have with such great nuance and great depth. Inej is my favorite female character of all time. Nothing will top her, at least for right now. And yeah, that's not really a very unpopular opinion. Six of Crows is great. Next we have Harry Potter. The only reason I'm debating not putting this in God tier is because of JK Rowling. <laughs> Honestly, JK Rowling just needs to let the series be. She needs to stop saying things about it and changing canon or introducing canon things retroactively like representation and diversity. And I know that the art is separate from the artist but I can't deny the fact that what JK Rowling has done has kind of decreased my love of the series. But also the last time I read the series in completion was six years ago I think, back in 2014 I reread the series. And genuinely I think I would still like the books as they are, so I'm gonna put it in god tier just because of how much it has an effect on my life and also just has like a cultural phenomenon, you can't deny how much it has influenced our generation. I guess not my generation, I'm Gen Z, but generations in general. I've included Spiderweb Chronicles here because it is something that I have read in its entirety, but I read it back in fifth grade and really could not tell you even like what it is about except for like the field guide. I do remember liking it, so I'm just gonna put it in good tier. Strange the Dreamer. Honestly, I created like demigod tier because of Strange the Dreamer, like in anticipation of it. I'll put it in first in demigod tier. Hello, yes. I think I need to reread this duology before I can really decide that it's god tier, but truly it's a book that like spoke to my soul. Like Laszlo was such a beautiful character to explore because his eagerness and his willingness to pursue his dream was so like emboldening and you just could like feel his passion. It was such a great reading experience. It literally feels like fairy tale, but it also explores like the topics of war and how that affects people on both sides and how sometimes history doesn't always have a clear villain. Yeah, definitely something that I think could be god tier, but I think I need to give it like a reread. The Darkest Minds. Okay, so if you asked me maybe, like three years ago, I probably would have said like good tier, great tier, but when I reread it in 2018, I fell in love with it. I did not realize how good it was. And I think it speaks to the fact that I'm a very character driven reader because not a lot of plot really happens. I shouldn't say that. Stuff happens, but it's a very slow moving story. But again, I love characters and Alexander Bracken did these characters so well. Even when they're like in conflict, even when the characters I don't agree with what they're doing, like there's a lot of decisions that I don't agree that these characters do. But I love that it's like explored because obviously I don't have to agree with what happens, 
but if it's something that like you they realize either that it was wrong and they understand the consequences and they can grow from that then like i can't be upset and i love seeing characters grow the second book is phenomenal maybe sob and i actually really like the way that the third book concluded the series so yeah i'm putting this in god tier Okay, so the Seven Realms series, the first book is called The Demon King. Not a lot of people on booktube talk about this, even though I did discover it on booktube. I discovered it from Reagan from Peru's Project, but I really think it's slept on. And like when I read it, I read it in like a week and these are not short books, but it's such a great YA high fantasy. The one thing I remember not particularly loving was the romantic relationship that develops. And then like, I'm really picky because <laughs> I don't like insta love. But I remember loving the world and the lore and all of like the plot twists that happen. I put this in Demigod tier as well because I- is that something that I want to reread and I do plan on rereading relatively soon, maybe? I don't know, I'm not putting any promises. Dang, this plot is so heavily skewed. <laughs> what can I say? I like the series that I invest my time in. Next we have Mistborn. Again, automatic god tier. I think this was my first time really delving into adult high fantasy. And I'm really glad it was with Mistborn. It was a very clear system, so it was so easy to understand and you didn't feel overwhelmed by the world, even though there are a lot of characters. Again, how this series incorporates faith is just absolutely brilliant. And then the magic system is so cool. And the series takes place over like five years, I believe. So I really like that you get to see them grow into the roles that they eventually have in the later books. I definitely need to continue with Brandon Sanderson's work because it was great. Oh, the last here. I feel like I should have talked about this back with the Lightning Thief, but here we are. Maybe this is going to be controversial, but I'm going to put this in Demigod tier, even though that's still very, very good. If you just asked me the first four books, I would put it in God tier and probably above everything else. Like before Blood of Olympus came out, I was convinced that I would like Heroes of Olympus more than PJO, but then Blood of Olympus came out and was pretty disappointing. <laughs> Which is so sad given like the House of H Hades is literally like one of the best things I've ever written. It's so good. And to have all these really cool things set up and these really high stakes and just to not see them be realized to their full potential. Just Rick, you failed me. Uh, that's a bit dramatic. I love you, Uncle Rick. The Raven Boys. I'm gonna put that in great tier. It's definitely something that's like a matter of taste. The writing style in particular made me fall in love with it very much. It was just so atmospheric. I loved getting this very quiet almost view into these characters' lives. And I can really appreciate when you can tell that the author really thought out what the series was going to be from the beginning. Like when you get to the end, you can see all the things clicking together and how things make sense. Like that's so satisfying. Like it's a really, really, really good series. The Red Pyramid. Ooh. Again, this is a book series I haven't read in a long time. I really liked it, but I also really cannot tell you any more details about that. Do not have much of an explanation. I kind of want to put it in good tier, but I also don't like the where like in comparison to the rest of these books. I'll put it the first in good tier. <gasps> the selection. <laughs> this is undoubtedly trash. Oh my god. It's enjoyable trash. It's entertaining trash. Like I'm pretty sure I read the whole second book in a sitting, but it's just, when you think about what happens in this series, it's so stupid. And especially what, given what happens and how everything is resolved in the last book, so dumb. I don't think it's an unpopular opinion to say that America Singer is one of the worst protagonists ever. Most annoying, makes dumb choices, does not learn from those dumb choices. She's also so not self-aware. And like the way that the love triangle is resolved was truly like, just such a waste of my time to read this series. Do not like that. Throne of Glass. So this is one I also, I have not read the whole series of. I've only read up to Queen of Shadows, but I have read The Assassin's Blade. And this one is interesting. Cause if you'd asked me like back in 2015 or 2016, I would have put this in like God tier. Air of Fire was like my favorite thing ever. Like if you look at my Goodreads review, it's so funny because I'm like, this is the best thing a million stars. Ah! But now in retrospect, I don't think this series is as good as I remember. I do remember not loving Queen of Shadows as much, but I still enjoyed it. What I used to say about Air Fire is that it feels like a completely different series. Like it gets so, like the, the magic in the world gets so much larger and so much bigger. And I used to say that as a compliment, but now when I think about it, that's not really a compliment. 
it's just so obvious that Sarah J Maas kind of either forgot or changed her mind about what she wanted the series to actually be like because it really felt like everything that happened in Throne of Glass and Crowd of Midnight was like irrelevant given the new things that she introduced in Air of Fire, which I just don't think really reflects well from a storytelling perspective. So I'm going to put that, I'm gonna put it in okay tier because I don't think it's horrible. I just think it's not the best. Watch me read the series again and love it. To All the Boys Loved Before by Jenny Han. Again, I'll put this in good tier, kind of higher up, above beautiful creatures. They're solid, they're fun, good times. Just not, like there's just not much about them. It's one of those things where I kind of prefer the movie format more. Because the movie, like I could just put on, have a good time, feel good, and then like end. Whereas with the book, I kind of want to like gain a little bit more from it just because I'm using so much of my time to read it. What I will say is that I actually really like the last book and how it talks about college because just the way that people who are not in college at this time describe the college application process is just, it's always wrong and I really appreciated the way that it was like handled in this series. Twilight. I'll put Twilight in bad tier. Even though like at the time I didn't, like I didn't think it was that bad. But again, just some of the things that happen, you're like, okay, that was odd. That was a weird explanation. Even the movies, like I don't even hate the movies. They're just like, there's just not much to them. Now, a study in Charlotte. I only read the first two, so I probably shouldn't be including it on this list. <laughs> I like what I read so far, but I'm definitely like only in it for the two main characters, Jamie and Charlotte. I love their banter and I love their dynamic. The plot can get a little weird. And by weird, I mean like it just doesn't make as much sense. It's not really developed properly. So I'm gonna put it in okay tier. I'll put it above Daughter Smoke and Bone. And then <laughs> weird to be ending on this one, but Among the Hidden, who remembers that one? I think it's one of those books that you read in school. I know that's how I was introduced for it, to it, but I continued. It's like a seven book series. I read all of them. I read this so long ago that I don't really have much to say, but I wanted to say that I read it because where else would I say that I read this series? It's like a dystopian future where you're not allowed to have more than two kids, I think. But we follow a character who is a third child. I'll put it in good tier. I liked it. <laughs> so now looking at my tier, I think good is just the wackiest thing. Like what a weird assortment of books. It like kills me to put Kingdom Keepers in bad, but I have to be honest with myself. Ah, uh, mm. I feel like I'm not gonna agree with this list in like a week, but this is what I got. This is what I have. <laughs> Please let me know if you agree with my rankings, if any of my choices were controversial. I think it makes sense that my list is kind of skewed to the top because if I am completing a series or going on with this series, it's probably because I enjoy it. It's kind of weird because I'm going off about what I felt when I initially read these books. They probably, a lot of them would be higher and I'm just going by what I think I would view them now. And so maybe I'm wrong if I ever happen to reread any of these series and change my mind. So be it. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.